Well, welcome, Spencer. Great to see you. Well, who doesn't like to get a great deal on a flight, right? <laughs> so yeah, I definitely want to ask you to share some how-to tips in that regard. But first, tell us about your company, Straight to the Point, what it does, and its beginnings yeah. as a side hustle. Yeah, for sure. So my background, I worked for about 10 years in politics, starting at university and enjoyed it, had a good time. But okay. at, towards the end, I started writing part-time as a freelance freelance writer. And within about six months, I had full-time work for the writing side, about points and miles and you know credit card points, how to find flight deals, all that. How, kind of, what, what caused you to start writing about that in the first place, though, if you were in politics? Um, yeah. So <laughs> my last political job. There's a little jump there. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. I'm sure. Yeah. It's my last political job was in DC and they actually wanted us to take our time off, uh, our vacation days or PTO. And that was new for me in the political world where we were used to working, you know, 20 hours a day, seven right. days a week. Work is everything. So when I finally had the chance to do that, I just started looking for flight deals, just cash fare deals, just anything I could find to go see the world because I'd never been able to. <laughs> Something that you're doing for yourself. Yeah, just decided Initially, to, yeah. Yeah, and I was just looking for ways to get out of the country and see something new because I just hadn't. And I then stumbled into an article talking about how you can use credit card points and transfer and transfer the points to airlines and book flights. And I was like, what is this? And how does this work? And, <laughs> and then I- And, and you then can then fly saw, for free? Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and for me, I'm, I'm for our American audience, 6'3", and I'm a big guy, so I don't fit an economy very well. So- to me, it was like, oh, this is my ticket to fly business at first class on yes. long flights and not cram myself in the back like I have before. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I basically spent four hours a night for six months reading all the airline routing rules and credit card fine print and pretty much everything you could ever read about how to navigate a war travel and loyalty programs. Not the normal way wow. to learn about this, but no, I got really into it, loved trying to understand it. And then... Just kind of started helping people that I met with it and found a way to found somebody who needed a writer and started doing that and found somebody else who needed a writer and started doing that. And then it, it took six months and then I left my day job. So. Really? After six months? So these were yeah. th these people needing the, the writing were all in the travel industry. Yep. They all had websites writing about this same stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, I can use all this stuff that's in my head. And yeah. It's, it's a little, it's it's more fun than politics, I would say. I mean, I, I still like politics, but unlike most people, but it's, yeah, I don't know. There's just something fun about travel and getting to kind of get out and see the world. Well, I got to ask you, when you started looking for the best deals for yourself, did you envision at that point that this is something that you could actually monetize and turn into a side hustle, let alone full time? No, I didn't think about it at all. I was just like, okay, this is how I'm going to get on a plane. And there's, I want to go fly all over the world. And I got really interested in the different products that airlines have, they offer. What's this business class look like versus this one? And I just started making a list of all the things I wanted to try just to experience it. I always like to say that the journey should be as fun as the destination. So what's it, what are a couple of examples that, that of that on that list? That I've, so the first ticket I booked was called for the Etihad Apartments, and they're based out of the UAE and Abu Dhabi. I mean, you have a seat and a separate bed and the whole thing with, yeah, I mean, it was just absurd. Like, like an apartment in the sky. Yeah, 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 quite literally. And since then, I've been able to fly tons of different airlines that all offer like amazing products. I'm not, I don't know, maybe I'm not as critical as I could, I could be, but I just like, how can you get mad when you get to lie down on a flight? That, it really? takes 10 hours or 15 hours. So to me, it's, hey, I'm not sitting in economy. That's and right. Yeah. I did. I know that experience going to like Taiwan, sitting in the back of a plane, taking 24 hours to get there from the East Coast. I've done that. <laughs> a friend of um, mine would, who, a friend of mine who very similar was like 6'3". He used mm -hmm. to call economy squirrel class. Yeah. Like his knees would be there and his little hands yeah. would be there trying mm -hmm. to eat, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's and then somebody slams their seat in your face. <laughs> yeah, just it's just always like interesting when you're trying to work too. If you've got you kind of have to like, like rotate your laptop and kind of like move your hands in this weird way to get to right. the key. And then to put whole, the seat back, the and whole, then your the yeah. cover your laptop goes down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was just I just wanted to see what it was like up front, and I haven't gone back since. I just keep trying that. That same mentor, he used to say the best way to travel is the front of the plane and the back of the car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good, that's a Isn't that good, good? One. I like that. 
<laughs> well, what oh, was <laughs> you're going to write that one down? <laughs> I know. Over and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what was happening in your company to think? I think I can take this full time now because you were talking only six months. Yeah, it's. I mean, it was just the amount of writing that I was getting from clients. Based, I mean, at ah. that point, they're basically clients ah. as a freelancer. And yeah, I was just kind of like, you know what? I could work from anywhere. And so what had first started is, oh, I could take a trip or two a year and do something fun. I was like, oh, I could spend like a lot of time exploring the world and just work from anywhere. Right. So that was just really appealing to me. And nice. I've pretty much been doing that ever since. I just transitioned out of writing for others and to writing for myself. And that's, yeah. All right. And the company name is Straight to the Points. Yep. I love I like, that name. Uh, that is so good. Yeah. So good. It's the, the idea behind it originally was just kind of like no nonsense. Let me just get, get you the info you need to do the thing you want to do. And that's kind of how I operate. So what is the business model for it then? Where are you generating <laughs> revenue? <laughs> yeah, I started this as a hobby in the middle of the kind of freelance life, probably two, two years into freelancing, and then did it as a hobby for another two and a half years. Or as okay. I said, I just lost a lot of money on MailChimp fees. But, but I loved it. So it's all built around a newsletter, an email newsletter. I send what could roughly be called flight deals, but specifically flights you can book with points. And so when I took it full time, I decided to just launch a paid version of it. This is the simplest way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I have a monthly and an annual version. The monthly is like nine ninety nine, super cheap. And then the annual is nine ninety nine. So you get like an 18% discount if you're willing to pay for the year. Right. So, it's pretty simple. It's not, there's not a lot of mess. It's just kind of, if you would like this, great. There's a free version. People can get, get kind of a sense of what it is, but okay. it's just, a, it's just a simple, yeah, pay for service, basically. Can you give me a, an example of the size of your readership? Yeah, I think between paid and free, it's somewhere over 20,000, 21,000. Right. 1,000, I think. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 22 at this point. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of fun. I'm always trying to find deals to send people. I like the business model of that because like you said, like I, I too am a fellow traveler, so you can be anywhere doing that. And yeah. if there was a place, for example, you're going into that you know the internet connection is going to be a little bit shoddy or, or non-existent, you can even upload it, schedule it, it's going to go out on time and you can yeah. be out in the jungle trekking or whatever you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I really enjoy the remote aspect of it. And uh, in some ways, it's dangerous, too. I think if you work for yourself and you can work remotely and you go places a lot, you just find you're going to work like you. Yes, it's not. I, I remember at one point a friend of mine, his girlfriend was like, you guys don't really just vacation and you travel like it was like an active thing. Like you go do a lot of things and you work while you're doing it. It's not just I went and sat on a beach. Right. Or I just went and did tours and. Yeah, it's it's always kind of a mix for me, and I'm happy with it. To me, it's yes. I get to see more. I still get to work, but sometimes I get to work with a, I don't know, an amazing city view. If I'm in like, you know, on a high floor in a hotel in Japan, or I get to go work on a beach. Not many people get to say that they can do those things, so I'm really lucky in that way. And I, I love it. You just, but you do have to kind of remember. Okay, I got to take some time to not <laughs> work and go see the things. I've def I've definitely gotten better at it. I used to get kind of caught up in my work and I'd lose track of time and I'm like, oh, I just wasted an entire day and I'm just sitting here in Seoul. And <laughs> I'm like, why am I doing this? There's so many things to go see. Well, so I appreciate, it's a learning process. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate the reminder because not, literally it was maybe two hours ago I had that thought because as of Tuesday, I'm going to be on the road for six weeks and will be working as well. But I made a conscious choice that I wasn't going to let the work interrupt these places that I would be that I would probably not experience again or, or, yeah. or go back to. I don't yeah. want to miss out on the environment, like you just said, for yeah. this. So I, I'll, I'll just get skilled at doing both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's, I mean, a part of it's just figuring out the work that you have or you think you're going to have and figuring out when you can do that. So a lot of times mm -hmm. for me, I know... To me, breakfast is not generally the meal that you want to try somewhere. I mean, some places, don't get me. You go to Turkey, Turkish breakfast, like a whole thing. Absolutely. But for me, a lot of times, okay, I'm not as concerned about breakfast. So I will just sit at the hotel and eat, do my work for the day and then get out and try to get out by noon. Yeah. And then I just go do things. And 
that's, and so I've kind of divided the day up in that sense. Yes. Other times I just know that, okay, there's this, I don't know, some trek into the mountains or something in, but it starts in the morning. And so I'm like, okay, I'll do the work in the evening. And so I'm just kind of, I'm still kind of blocking off time, Yeah. but I'm blocking off, go and go explore and do the thing too, not just the work. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Enjoy yeah. both. Yeah. Admittedly, I'm still taking lots of photos and videos and sharing like Instagram stories while I'm like traveling, but it's, I think that's kind of fun because you need to share the experience with people. Right. And that's the best part too. New experience yeah. as well, but it, it's, it takes it to another level when you get to share it with others. Yep. So you started with the, the writing, get that up and going to the point where you can quit your full-time job six months later. So now you're growing that piece and decide to create this membership and then this yeah. subscri subscri subscription model. As that grew, was there a point that you introduced affiliate marketing into it? Yeah, I, I got I got credit card affiliate links. Okay. Within a couple months of starting, I'd worked with affiliate marketing quite a bit in the writing because credit card affiliates are kind of the backbone of the uh, points okay. in my space in the US. Right. I, I made an active choice not to make that the focus, which I I had a number of people tell me I would never be able to make money off of this and that it would always be nothing more than just a small side hustle because I didn't trust that people would actually pay for it. Ah. Um, but it was just, it's a space built off of free content with affiliate links and yes. that's, and that's fine. Okay. Yeah. It works out well for a lot of people. It's, it just meant that I couldn't dive as deep into topics that I wanted. And so I made a kind of a conscious choice to make it a, an option for people, but not the focus of what I do. Right. Um, the content is your focus. Again, and the subscribers. It's nothing yeah. against affiliate marketing. It's a great tool. I just think we we rely, a lot of us rely so heavily on it that I think it can almost become a drag for us to write the same kind of thing. Because if you have affiliates, you want more audience, which means you need to write for people who haven't done it before, which means you have to think very surface level. What's exciting? What's click? Not, it doesn't have to be clickbait, but what's like right. exciting and interesting. Yes. Versus being able to kind of like nurture the audience you have too and talk about things that will help them and not leave them once you've gotten them in. The right. beginners still need help. So there's a place for it. I'm not saying, I yes, just, I sure. wanted to be able to dive a bit deeper with my audience. And that's mm -hmm. why it's kind of a, it's an add on rather than the focus. For yeah. Me. Yeah. I can have a very long conversation about affiliate marketing. Okay. I, I might, might ask you about that in a future episode. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you do differently if you, if you were starting again? I don't know. I feel like I've learned from all the experiences yeah. I've had. I've learned yeah. from each website that I wrote for. I mean, I wrote for one website that was very SEO focused and I learned a lot about that. And I worked for another website that was really built around a Facebook community. And so I was helping kind of build and run that. So I learned about the community aspect of things. Right. I've worked with some people who were just deep into the like airline industry and kind of understood that world. So I learned from them. I don't know. I, just, I feel like yeah. it'd be hard for me to give up any of that. Yeah, it's just too many. I don't know. I just think I helped. To, it helped give me context for a lot of things. Yeah, that, I think that's a very valuable observation because we can be in situations where maybe the the job isn't that great or we don't really want to be there. But at the same time, for whatever reason, if you're choosing to be there, if you're there, give it all you got and take advantage of the learnings that you just described. I think I've been really fortunate. I wrote for some great people. And, you know, I, I didn't walk away being like, oh, I can't believe I spent time writing for them. Yeah. I learned, I learned a lot, have good relationships. Still, I was just going to say, make some good contacts. But, yeah. 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 And yeah. not even from a business side of things, just they're good friends. So mm -hmm. I like that. Awesome. <laughs> well, while we have a lot of loyal listeners in the U.S., we also have Side Hustle Hero fans listening and watching from around the world. And yeah. Recently, I was looking at booking an international flight, and I turned to what for me would be the usual suspects like Skyscanner, Kayak. What are other or better places that uh, people can look to for great flights, uh, including those not departing out of the U.S.? I think about business class because that's what I write about, and that's what yes. my audience does. So those are the deals I'm thinking about. Yeah. But, I mean, really impressive deals out of the East Coast to Europe. And then... I just use Google Flights and there's there's an option to do explore. So rather than putting in a specific destination, you can put in like Europe or okay. Japan or Southeast Asia or the Middle East, and it will bring you 
to a page that shows kind of the map and a bunch of different pins with prices. And you can set, if you have a specific travel date, you can set flexible dates, one week, two week trips. You can see out six months, I think it is. And I think you can, I think it's six different departure airports you could pick. So for you, since being in Vancouver, you could pick Vancouver, but you could also say, let me check Seattle and San Francisco as well. Maybe Calgary, just kind of mix it in and see kind of where the, where the deal is. So even um, in your business, you're using Google Flights yep, as a yep. tool. I have a, I have a ton of bookmarked Google Explore or Google Flights Explore page searches so that right. I can quickly check, including Canadian departure points since I do write, have Canadian readers. So yeah, right. it's, that to me is like a, a very important aspect in Canada. Obviously there is a kind of, there's a points and miles world. Prince of Travel is a good resource for Canadians for learning about points and the credit card side of things there. In Europe, it's tougher with credit cards. So if you have your UK readers, they'll they'll be well aware, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, generally, the cash fares are better from Europe rather than starting in the US. I mean, to an extreme, sometimes it could be, you could find a $1,700 round trip business class ticket from Europe to the US. And then the equivalent going, starting in the US would be, you know, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000. So wow. obviously it depends on the day, but there's yes. gen generally speaking, some really good flight deals out of Europe. I've got a very close friend based out of Brazil, and we were looking at yeah. flights for him. And yeah, the difference coming from departing yeah. from Canada round trip versus departing yeah. their round trip, it was like, wow, that was huge. Yeah. It's it's always interesting to see how that works. And some people use that to their advantage. I, I know right. people who travel to, I mean, Europe is where they want to go or they have family there. And so what they'll do is they'll, they'll use points for a one-way ticket over because generally booking an award ticket with points, it's half the cost of a round trip. Cash tickets, it's not like that at all. <laughs> Cash tickets, a one-way could be more expensive than the round trip. Right. Are or, you finding that's still the case? Yeah. Yeah. For, okay. for international, especially. Domestic in the U.S. is a mixed bag. Oh. I don't know domestically in Canada as well, but some people will book a one-way award ticket over to Europe and then they will start, and then they'll start a cash ticket coming back, knowing that it'll take them back to Europe. And they just basically keep starting their trips from Europe, basically. Oh, wow. <laughs> they know they're going to go back. I mean, it takes some planning, yep. but it ends up making, the, making it easier to get deals. That's kind of like expert level. <laughs> really? Right. And, and, and people with some time on their hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, you're expert in getting those deals on business class flights. Any tips for us in that regard? Yeah, I mean... If you want to do like points, I always talk about using points for award tickets. That's to me is the sweet spot. If you have a business, you don't want to spend all your money uh, on travel, but you still want to do it. So I feel like it's a way to enhance the experience. And so for me, it's just a matter of earning the right points with the right credit cards that I know will help me book the flights I want. And once you get to that point, be flexible. It's the like number one rule. Airlines will sell you any seat in that plane for cash. They only release some seats that can be booked with points, and sometimes they don't release any. Right. So it's, in a sense, like it's not about you and your schedule. And the more you can be flexible on the day you leave, the route you take, you know, and what airline you fly, the easier it is. And just patience sometimes. It's not, you may look for something, award space one day and you go, oh, there's no, nothing I can use my points on. And then two days later, there it is. Or it could be two months later or three right. months later. And so, again, kind of going back to flexibility, if you can book a, a month out or two weeks out, it gives you a whole a longer window to find the ticket. But if you need to lock something in early because you have to be somewhere, you have to just know that it might be uh, tougher. Yes. So to me, it's as soon as you know you want to go somewhere on a certain or at least in a time frame, you can start searching a, almost a year out. And wow. you should if you know you're going to need to be somewhere. <laughs> and yeah. something like Google Flights, will it give you a heads up for the business class fares as well? For for award space, no. Award space, you're going to have to kind of individual learn different programs, individual programs. It's easy to ah, easier okay. to think about things for as yeah, for points. Thinking about things as an alliance. So you have a Star Alliance, which mm -hmm. Air Canada and United are a part of. You can use either United or Air Canada's website to search for award space on all their Star Alliance partners. Even if you're not booking with one of those programs, you could search on Air Canada, find the award space, and then say, oh, I have Turkish miles. And they can book the same flight because they're all partners. So I know that's, I feel like we've gotten into the weeds slightly, but that's, I mean, the concept is just to learn how to find the space. Yes. And you don't need to search everywhere all the time. You just have to know where the right websites are. 
If, well, if maybe, it makes it easier, I have a quick start guide on my website that explains kind of the basics of all of this. It's okay. free. You could just, right. if, you're, if you're in the U.S., you can get a quick guide on kind of how credit works with credit cards and all that. But otherwise, there's information on kind of understanding airline alliances, how to find award space, stuff like right. that. Chris, it can feel can, overwhelming. Sure. I, yeah. And that's why I don't kind of go down that rabbit hole. That's why we look to people like you instead. <laughs> but I've got a friend who... And and maybe you can expand on this to make sure I've got it right. But you mentioned those alliances like Star Alliance, One World, yep. where yep. it's it's a group of uh, many airlines. And what he did was take a look at one of those alliances and take a look at the points programs and say, okay, this particular airline is the easiest and cheapest to get into, to get into the tiers where you suddenly you get free lounge lounge service. I think about like elite status with airlines. Yes. And stuff. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Like elite. There's, and I that's think that's like a whole nother oh, okay. side of the game too. Yeah. And I think it was a Greek airline yep. because Aegean. once, once a year or once every couple of years, he stops for lunch in Greece because yeah. part of the stipulation is that plan is you have to fly into their country at least once. Yeah. Although he need, uses it every year. With else. Aegean, I can't remember if it's four flights on a G in itself. So I know. Okay. I know people who they would earn the status and then every year they or every couple of years they would go back and pop around, bop around the Greek islands on a G in, and then they'd be like, all right, requalified, great. <laughs> right. And then they get to use um, the so lounges use everywhere the else. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You did bring up a good point, or at least triggered in my mind. Sometimes I've seen with airlines, you can purchase a flight 100% using points or a hybrid, a certain yeah. amount of cash plus points. Yep. Is there there one version or another that's the better deal, or does it depend? Generally, it's so a, I call it like strictly an award ticket, where you basically you have a, a set points rate for the award, and then you have just the taxes and fees. Yes. Once you start varying from that, you start getting worse value. Okay. Um, out of your points. All right. Um, and you've mentioned, of course, the credit cards. Yeah. Choosing those so you get the points to to fund your vacations. What are some of yeah. the most important things a person should consider or look for then when choosing a credit card? Yeah, I so I always tell people there's three basic approaches you can take. Okay. There's the maximalist approach. In the U.S., we have tons of credit cards, and they all have big sign-up bonuses. Spend X dollars in generally three months or six months, earn big chunk of points. Okay. There are people who just work their way through every bonus they can get, and then they just and they just keep going that way. And so every few months, it's something new. Almost um, like a side hustle in itself. <laughs> it is, yeah. And so the thing is, it's, and it makes sense, most effort, most points. You're never going to earn points faster than getting a big sign-up bonus. But you do have to keep track. There's annual fees. You got to think about that when they come due. Mm. Is it a card that you should keep? Is it a card that's not worth it? Right. And that answer will be different for different people, depending on what the sure. benefits are in that card and what kind of travel they're doing. It's simple in that you just chase the bonus, but it's complicated, more complicated in that you have to like keep track of things. And every bank has different rules. So then you actually really have to pay attention to the bank's rules for getting bonuses. So again, yeah. complicated, but tons of points. There's the mid-tier I call it kind of like a hub and supplement where you kind of build a, you know, three to six credit cards that are just like, I'm going to have these cards and these are where I'm going to put my spend. And I base, and you basically get those based off the bonus categories they have. You match them to where you spend your money. So if right. a credit card has a grocery store bonus category and you spend lots of money at grocery stores. Okay. That's a good priority for you. Or if you don't spend at grocery stores, you go out to eat a lot, like a card that earns at restaurants mm. is going to be important to you. So okay. that's where you can kind of piece things together. And from there, you can, I, I say supplement, you can pick up a new sign up bonus here and there, but strategically, but right. not doing the kind of constant cycling. And yeah. then finally, it's just to keep it simple, get one to three cards, bonus categories and benefits that match what you need. And you just never think about it again. Right. There's, do there's do no... what you're really good at. Make the money there so that you can afford to take whatever trip you yeah. want. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there's there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. If you want to do the maximalist thing, you just can't complain about how much work it is to like keep track of things. If you want to do the simple approach, you can't complain that other people are earning more points than you. You just have to kind of decide where you want to be. No right answer. It's just your sure. It's your approach. So there's and there's way and some people who have side hustles even that just. You have to spend a lot of money on credit cards to keep the thing going, or even full time businesses. They yes. just earn a lot of points that way. And so they don't need a lot of credit cards. I mean, that's just, that's how it shakes out. So it just yes. again, depends on where you are. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a good point yeah. because my self storage facility, we put 
all the expenses through our visa, the one visa, and just racked it up for the points. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of kind of overarching concepts that I think, again, I'm not going to just keep plugging the quick start guide, but the free quick start guide really goes <laughs> over this. And you just have to get the foundational pieces of mm -hmm. knowledge and then yes. learning all the other pieces from it start to become, it starts to become easier to learn them. Mm -hmm. I think when people are busy professionals, especially if you have a side hustle, you clearly like doing things. You're not just sitting around because who decides to make more work for themselves unless they really want to do it? <laughs> so Good you point. do your day job, you come home, you do this. What kind of time do you have? Probably not a lot unless yeah. you're just super passionate about it. Great. Welcome to like the Crazy Points Club. We have a good time. But, <laughs> but if you're not quite there, just get the basics. And then just as you go along, pick up pieces, ask somebody who is nuts about points. And you don't have to do everything yourself. And right. And you'll, you'll start to kind of figure out what you need, what's your priorities. It, it's like I said, that it's, it's not one size fits all. Right. There's concepts that apply, but you, you start to fit it to your life and interests. Um, yeah. And I like to fly business in first class on international flights. That's my priority for points. Yes. I often pay cash for hotels because I just like the flight for me is going to be so much more expensive if I pay cash, but I'll put that my budget toward a nice hotel or a restaurant I want to go to or some tour or just right. anything, just kind of experience. And that's, that's my priority. Other people I know will sit in economy, doesn't matter how long the flight is, right. but they want a really nice hotel where they go. And so they use points for these like crazy luxurious hotels. It's right. just personal preference. Goes back to the, your customization point you made earlier. Yeah. yeah. So how how many years old now is Straight to the Points? Started in August of 2018 as okay. just my passion project. And yes. then full time January of 2021. So you've in been... In the middle of a pandemic, you should start a travel business. <laughs> of course. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind, right? That or a restaurant. I'm sure that was super easy for them too. <laughs> so you've been on a fl few flights from yeah. from that time what's been one of your most memorable deals or memorable flights oh that's a good one memorable flights was the first flight i ever booked and it was in it it just exemplifies how crazy i got about points at the beginning okay at the time you could you could book the Etihad apartments that we mentioned earlier from the u.s to the middle east for ninety thousand american miles and i was like okay that's interesting and then I was reading American Airlines, they're like a board chart, trying to understand everything. And I realized you could fly from the Middle East to Australia for 60,000 miles in the Etihad apartments, roughly the same length of a flight, just 30,000 fewer points. And so wow, I got a credit card that had a bonus of 60,000 or 65,000 American miles. And I was like, oh, I'll just book that. I can figure out how to get to the Middle East. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was... The booking is just kind of, it's absurd to think about now, but that was the first flight I ever booked with points because most people are like, oh, I want to go to Paris or London or Italy right. or Japan. No, let me, let me just really make this more complicated than it needs to be. So I, that alone was just kind of amusing to me, but the flight was amazing. I was the only one in the first glass cabin and clearly just starry eyed and just so excited to of be course. there. Of course. Yeah. The like food and beverage manager had come by and he was like, do you know what you want to eat? And I was like, well, I haven't even thought about this yet. I'm just still just like looking around. I'm like, you give me champagne before we take off? Really? Here's this? here's the menu. <laughs> and <laughs> and at the time, he had had this, they could really customize your meals. And it, he was just like, well, we can just make all of it for you and pair each course with wine. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Like, <laughs> I was the only one there. So they probably had a little more time, but they didn't have to do that. They could have taken a nap or something, get a little more rest. <laughs> And they were just, it was just really, it was just a nice gesture. And th this is the problem. If you fly up front, you'll never want to fly. <laughs> exactly. In again, you're like, how can I leave this? They're so nice. <laughs> yes. Um, so that was the, to me, even though it was like the first flight I ever, I guess second flight, but first I booked, that's still, I don't know. I still get happy thinking about that. For the best deal I've ever booked, cash deal, Cathay Pacific had an $865 first class round trip ticket from Da Nang to New York. Wow. It, on New Year's Eve. So it was like December 31st, 2018. That's, that's like usually the amount of the taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or fuel Maybe not surcharge. Even that much. I mean, yeah. yeah. So the, the flight usually went for twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So my wife and I actually, so I booked both of us <laughs> that flight to get home. And I was like, well, I should get a flight out there. 
And so I booked then a couple of days later, I booked an, uh, an award ticket to get us out there. Okay. And that's where we got, in, we got engaged on that trip. Really? Um, oh, no wonder yeah. it's memorable. So, Double memorable. Yeah. So my, 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 I, my, I don't know, thinking was like, people like to go back to where they got engaged to like, you know, relive whatever, just have a nice moment. So I was like, I don't want to do it where I live. I want to make us go back to Vietnam to do this. <laughs> So that's where we got engaged. And then I ended up using the other flight back to Vietnam to fly with a friend on my birthday six months later. That was $865. That was crazy. Wow. I don't think I'll ever see anything that yeah. again. <laughs> Let us know if you do. Yeah. If someone is not using a travel agent, yeah. is your recommendation mm -hmm. to deal directly with the airline or yeah. go Generally. through some of the platforms? There's online travel agents, like third-party booking sites like Expedia. I'm a huge fan of them, admittedly, for flights there goes getting a brain deal i guess but yeah um, really <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate but your honesty just, it's oh, it's just easier to deal with the airline to just go directly with travel agents so I, i'm a travel advisor i focus mostly on like luxury hotels but you still book directly with the airline and the nice part if you want to use an agent is if something goes wrong they'll fix it for you yes and particularly yep. good agents have relationships with staff at these airlines and they can often get things fixed faster than you. Obviously, the higher class of service you're flying, the more the more you're going to get prioritized. The higher yes. status you have, the more you're prioritized. All yep. that still applies. But having the yep. agent be able to just fix it for you can be nice. I think most of the people I work with are very kind of DIY, um, which I feel like side hustle people will understand. It's just, yes. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think that's, there's still benefits there. But I, I, I personally, if I'm just booking myself, would, go to the air, the airline right. I'm flying, or at least sometimes there's code share opportunities that are better. So United will sell a ticket on Lufthansa, one of the Star Alliance partners for less than what Lufthansa is selling it for that day. Okay. Or Air Canada could do it, right. or maybe Swiss. I mean, there's any right. number of combinations and it's, I will still book code shares, but yes. yeah. that's still directly with one of the airlines. And so. I'm, fo I, I'm following that principle generally too for hotels as well booking it directly with the hotel versus yeah. the platforms. Especially if you're somebody who cares about elite status because hotels generally won't let you earn elite nights and hotel points if you book through one of those online travel agencies. As like a travel advisor, I can book hotels for people directly with the hotel right. so that they still get all their benefits. I see. Uh, that's a different dynamic. But yeah, that's I, I like going directly with hotels. And honestly, if you're booking with a travel advisor, a travel agent, find one, especially if you like luxury hotels, find somebody who has access to their preferred booking programs because, you know, people like me could book you with breakfast and a hundred dollar property credit and an upgrade rather than right. you just booking the hotel. So there's, yes, there's still advantage. I would say with hotels, there's more advantages to working with an advisor than okay. with airlines. Airlines is still going to be the price in most cases. There's not right. really going to be discounts, generally speaking. Right. So, yeah. But related to, so. that's, a, that's a good tip. Related to that, uh, I had heard recently, and you can tell me if this is true or not, that travel agents have access to more flights or different flights than the general public does. I haven't noticed it. I mean, no. there's some oh, okay. consolidators out there. Who, I think that was the term. That's, a, that's yeah. a whole different thing that I've not okay. Right. I, okay. I'm mostly focused on using your points for the flights. Got <laughs> Maybe it. Maybe finding a great cash fare. Well, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you, Spencer? My website is straighttothepoints.co. That last part is very important. Yes. Co. You can find all the information I have on my award alerts newsletter if you're curious. It's it's basically I send out when there's availability. As I said earlier, not not every seat's going to be bookable. Sometimes you only find one seat. I focus on finding two, four, six, eight seats in business and first class on international flights okay. starting in the U.S. or Canada. And I just give you the dates so you don't have to think about it and then break down all the different ways you can book with points, kind of give you the insights into why you would book with one versus the other. That's the the brunt of what I do. I spend and, a lot of time in front of my computer. <laughs> and, on that, and on that site, there's a free version as well as the paid version. There's a free yep. version okay. that's kind of the Simple. It doesn't give you all the details. The good stuff's in the paid one. There's an annual and a monthly version. It's only $99 a year, nine ninety nine a month. And you can go to straightsupplements.co slash side hustle hero if you would like to sign up and uh, support Joan. So awesome. That's the best place to get to my work. I'm also on Instagram at straight to the points. I'm very active in the community there, talking with people in the comments right. and in DMs. So yeah, always happy to chat. And we'll make sure all those links are in the show notes. 
So what's your best tip, Spencer, to inspire others to start or grow their side hustle dream as you have? Inspire. If you like hard work, do some <laughs> more. Um, I'm, I'm not so sure it's inspiring as much as just be ready to pivot. I think there's just so many things that get thrown your way when you're trying to build something of your own that you just have to be ready for whatever gets thrown your way. You may see opportunities that you hadn't thought about and you're like, oh, wait, this is actually something that's going to work really well for me and I really enjoy it. There's going to be other times where you start down one path and you're like, this is awful. Like, right. Why am I doing this? This is not work. <laughs> oh, that's kind of okay. I mean, it's absolutely okay. And so it's a friend of mine always likes to joke that we've been like, he's helped me with the business and it's just we're building a plane while flying. And it's, it definitely <laughs> oh, I love that. A building like a that plane sometimes. while flying. <laughs> it definitely feels like that sometimes. There's just, there's always something new. There's all, especially if you grow. I mean, I didn't really know if, if this would become a full-time job or stay a side hustle. And I think as you grow, there's just different things you have to think about different things you want to have in place. Things that you didn't even yeah. think about in the beginning that have oh, showed man. up. Yeah. So many things where I'm like, why didn't that sync correctly with this other thing that I was And It's, I mean, it's, yeah, I think you just, it's, it's just kind of a journey where you learn a lot, a lot of things that you just weren't expecting to learn, mm -hmm. you know, placement of things. And I'm still not great at that. That's the thing is I would say I'm still pretty bad at the business side. I'm just good at the thing that I do. And right. I'm fortunately good enough at the thing that I do that people can look past, you know, is this the best way to, you know, promote this or advertise this or put a link here? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm trying to <laughs> just doing my best to get in front of you. <laughs> Focus on <laughs> what you're really good at, get really good yeah. at that. And then yeah. you'll ha be able to pay somebody else to do all the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Just being ready to pivot. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Spencer, for sharing the journey of your side hustle and for those tips on cards and travel points and flying, especially first class, and for being today's side hustle hero. Thanks so much for having me, John.